Well, I have a big black bag with a box inside. I think you can guess what the box is. Let's just say it's been a long time coming, but I finally got one. Here we are, the end of the road. Going in with a handful of games and an old controller. And if all goes well, coming out with a PlayStation 5. Let's do this. Well, I have a ba big black bag with a box inside. I think you can guess what the box is. Let's just say it's been a long time coming, but I finally got one. We'll open up when I get home. All right, well, I am back from my trip to GameStop and I happen to have a giant box with me. I have not opened it, so I have not taken a look at what I have, but the goal was accomplished. Ladies and gentlemen, I am now the proud owner of a PlayStation 5. <laughs> so let's take a look at this bad boy, see what a GameStop refurbished PS5 looks like. Now the nice thing is, I was required to get a year warranty with this, so if anything happens to it, I can return it to my GameStop store and I'll get a replacement, so that's nice. But let me go ahead and let's open this up. There's something in here, let's take a look. Okay, so it looks like this is all the other stuff. Of course we have the setup system setup paperwork. Okay, we have all the cords. Got HDMI, power cord, and I'm assuming this is the DualSense charging cable. So there's that, so we got all those. Here is the stand. Uh, I don't really know yet what orientation I'm gonna put my PS5, just because I, I have to figure out some stuff in terms of my, my display, because the PS5 is a monster and it's gonna to be tough to find out like a specific place to store it. <laughs> I'm gonna figure that out though. And then one of the most important things uh, is of course, the DualSense and it is the white one. Their PS5 that they had on display at GameStop for the pre-owned one um, had a black DualSense. This one's the white one, which is fine. I have no problem with it. Plus, I mean, it does match the system. So I actually never really like spent a lot of time holding the DualSense. It feels good. This feels a lot better to me than the DualShock 4. Like, I, I, I enjoy the, the hand feel of this controller. It's, it's got some weight to it too, which I appreciate. So, good job on that, Sony. I'm excited to check out some of the, uh, the features of the DualSense as we go along. And now it's time to pull out the system. Ugh, here it is, here is my giant router, aka the PlayStation 5. It's in great shape, honestly. It looks really clean, it looks slick. It has, of course, the disk drive. I could not get a digital-only one, I had to get physical. Because physical, forever, baby. But yeah, now I've actually like held this thing and seen how freaking massive it is. It's very large. It definitely makes my, my Series X look kind of small in comparison, but uh, it's got some good power in it. So that's the PS5. And they're paying about $358 out of pocket in addition to the games I traded in. Traded in a number of collection games, and I'm, I'm pretty okay with that, especially considering I know how it is. So, yeah, PS5. I'll try to show uh, when I start getting it set up uh, soon. But yeah, I finally have one. I'm very, very happy. All right, so as you can see, I'm outside. It's actually the next day. So today I finally set up my PS5 and was going through setup when I discovered something very dreadful and that is my DualSense controller had very bad stick drift where essentially every time I tried to do anything it would always immediately zoom to the left. Not good. So thankfully because I was required to buy a warranty with my PS5 I returned to the DualSense and got another one with GameStop. So this is a completely different DualSense controller. We tested this one before I left the store and it works perfectly. So 
shouldn't be a problem when I go back home and uh, sync it up with my PS5. And then while I was there, I decided, you know what? I need more PS5 games. I want to have a nice collection of them starting up. So I picked up one game that I've been waiting to play for a very long time, and it was on sale. So I figured I'd grab a few games from my collection, trade them in, and pick this up. Spider-Man Miles Morales, the ultimate edition on the PlayStation 5. I haven't played the original Spider-Man. That's, that's, that's what I'm talking about. Because by the time I got to it, they announced this version that came with the remaster, so I figured I'd just wait and play it on PS5. Now I can finally play it on PS5. And Corey actually has played this on PS5 and says it's fantastic, so I'm pretty excited to add this to the collection and finally play Spider-Man on PS5. I also have another game that's gonna be coming in the mail today uh, that I will show off in a second. So that's gonna be fun, so I'll show that when it comes in. All right, well, it is the evening and my extra game came in. So, like I said, I've been wanting to build up my PS5 collection since I currently now have two games, thanks to picking up Miles Morales. And one game that I wanted to pick up because it is PS5 exclusive, at least for a while, and it just looked interesting, is Ghostwire Tokyo. I did see that GameStop had a pre-owned copy that could get delivered today a pretty reasonable price so I jumped on it and lo and behold not only did I get it it was the deluxe edition pre-owned on the PS5 now I did check the code because the code was still on here the code was used so that's a bummer but I got the deluxe edition packaging and the game looks terrific in uh, the condition of the game inside so complete Ghostwire Tokyo deluxe edition for 30 bucks not too bad we have one more package of games coming in actually it might be two more i think some of them are coming on monday and some are coming on wednesday so we got some more games coming in soon and then we'll wrap up this pretty epic adventure of game hunting all right so i've actually had the ps5 plugged in for about 24 hours now for reference there it is in the background over there so i wanted to give you my early impressions i know obviously i'm two years late when it comes to owning a PS5, but I figured I'd share my thoughts on it as a primarily Xbox-centric user. Although now, I do have every PlayStation, except I don't own a PS1 and I don't own a PSP, but I don't own the other ones. I'm impressed by the PS5. I'm genuinely impressed. The big things that I've noticed that are big reason to own a PS5, first of all, the DualSense is no joke. This is probably one of the best controllers ever made. And I say that, I don't say that lightly because I love the Xbox controller. The one thing that this does not have, that if it did, it would probably make it the perfect controller, is the off-center joysticks. That's the one thing that the Xbox controller has always done that I always appreciate. But everything else is incredible on this thing. It feels great in your hand. It's a huge improvement from the DualShock 4. It's got a nice weight to it, which is nice. I like a bigger, like kind of weightier controller. The vibration stuff that they do is amazing. So far, I've tried a grand total of four games on the PS5. Those, of course, are Astro's Playroom, which is the bundle-in game that comes with every PS5. It's a free download. I've also tried Deathloop, Ghostwire Tokyo, and Spider-Man Remastered. And all of those have really impressed me in terms of what the controller offers for the PS5. Deathloop, it was awesome because like when you're communicating with someone, the person you're talking to, their voice comes through the controller, which is a neat touch. Of course, the, the game, it, honestly, if you do get a PS5, the game you absolutely need to play first is Astro's Playroom. Because not only does is that just a fun, charming throwback that takes you through the history of PlayStation, but it also really showcases what this controller has to offer. And let me tell you, it does a terrific job with that. Plus, it's just charming as hell. But Deathloop really impressed me in terms of the, the controller. Ghostwire does some cool things with the controller. Uh, you feel the vibration. Yeah, the, the vibration is just amazing. And the graphics, of course, are great. Now, granted, I will say, for now, because my TV only has one 4K port, I can't put both my Xbox and my PlayStation 5 on that one port. I am going to be getting a splitter probably as soon as this week, 
where I will have the ability to do that. So once that happens, I can really see how good the PS5 looks as opposed to the Xbox Series X. I can almost guarantee they're going to look pretty much the same. The graphics are great, I'm, I mean, regardless, even though I'm currently viewing it in 1080p instead of 4K, it still looks fantastic. Runs buttery smooth. I'm impressed by the PS5. I was not expecting to be as impressed by it as I am. Now, all that being said, would I, if I had the option to go back in time, pick up a PS5 at launch as opposed to the Series X? Probably not just because I think the main thing that the Series X has going for that the PS5 doesn't, Game Pass, Xbox Live, and I do feel a lot of like multi-platform games do tend to run a little bit better on the Xbox. I actually kind of like the UI better on, on the Xbox as well. The PlayStation 5's UI is kind of weird. The other thing that's a little confusing is there's, there's a lot of stuff that I used to be able to do very easily on the PS4. It's a lot more confusing to figure out on the PS5 for like, one of the dumb things is where the power button was. Like there's two buttons, they're two different shapes and they're like on the big black spine of the PS5. So it took me a second to figure out which one did what. I also had an issue earlier when I booted up the PS5 today uh, where my DualSense wasn't synced for some reason. Like I tried to press stuff, I tried to press any button and nothing worked. So I ended up having to reboot the PS5 and it now it worked, then it worked fine, but kind of a weird issue. So for the most part, I'm really impressed by the PS5. I think it's a very good system. I think Sony did a terrific job of building a really cool looking system that just does a great job at, you know, presenting what it, what it needs to be. And I think if you have a game that literally takes, you know, takes what the DualSense can do and really puts it to work, you should probably get it on PS5 just because the, the DualSense effects are that impressive. It really kind of makes me wish that Supermassive made a sequel to Until Dawn a, a real sequel to Until Dawn on the PS5, because man, just imagine the stuff they could do with the dual sense. Or even if they just made the Quarry exclusive, even though I know I'm playing on Xbox, but that would have been cool to see what they could have done with the dual sense. But I'm impressed so far. I really enjoy it. I think it's a great system. I can't wait to dive deeper into it. I'm just kind of messing around with it at this point. I haven't like dived deep into any of the games, although I think of the ones that I currently have, I'm probably going to try to focus on Deathloop and Spider-Man. Ghostwire, I might stream for Let's Play Spooky Games, perhaps, because I think it definitely appeals to that. So we'll see. But yeah, I've, uh, I've really enjoyed my time with the PS5. Just want to give you kind of my hands-on impressions as we go into our final unboxing, aka, I mean, not really a condition report because all this is going to be new, but our final batch of games that I'm going to be getting for this video, and then we're going to go into our recap to see everything that I picked up this week. All right, so it's another day and I have received a package from Best Buy. So one of the cool things that Best Buy has been doing lately is they've partnered with Limited Run Games and have gotten several of their limited physical releases in store. Now, obviously if it's like a super hard to find one, it's probably not gonna be there for long, but there were three different physical releases on the Switch that I was very interested in. And sure enough, Best Buy happened to have them for a while, so I figured I would swoop. So the first one I have is No More Heroes on the Switch. So I had this game originally when it came out on the Wii. It got ported to not much. The original No More Heroes actually hasn't gotten ported that often, but since I have No More Heroes 3 on the Switch, I figured I would grab a copy of the original because I didn't have the original. So this should be a fun one to play, I'm excited. And since we got the original, we might as well get the sequel. So we have No More Heroes 2, Desperate Struggle on the Switch as well. This one was ported to the PS3. I know, I think to the PC at one point. But yeah, I have a physical copy of both No More Heroes 1 and 2. So now I have all three. And I'm actually going to have another copy because I'm planning on getting the Xbox Series X port of No More Heroes when that comes out. Now, when it comes to Limited Run, of course, one of the most infamous digital games that was for a while 
not available to purchase was Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, which is a terrific beat em up based on the fantastic movie. Well, limited run when Ubisoft did their re-release on current gen platforms, decided to do a physical run. And even though I do already own the original version on the 360 and I own the digital version on the Xbox One slash Series X, I really wanted a physical copy of this. So I'm probably gonna keep this sealed, but I have Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, the complete edition on the Switch. Maybe not. This might be one of those games that'd be really fun to play co-op with just, you know, a couple friends on the Switch. So I figured I would grab it and add it to the collection. So got physical copy of Scott Pilgrim, the three limited run Switch games. Glad to add those to the collection. And then this last one was one of two clearance games that I picked up. Because Best Buy has been doing a lot of clearance stuff lately. And I've been wanting to pick this game up for Xbox for a while because I, I played it a good amount on PlayStation 4 and it's a good game. So I wanted to buy it again, but I wanted to find it for a good price. And I think I found it for a good price. So we have Crash Nitro Kart or a Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled on the Xbox One. This was on clearance for like 10 bucks or something. It was pretty cheap. So glad to add it to the collection. I accidentally ordered two copies of it. So I have to go to Best Buy and return one, but this game is pretty expensive still. Like I think GameStop still sells it for like 35, 40 bucks pre-owned. So to find a brand new copy for 20, pretty happy. So glad to add that to the collection. And I still got one more game that is gonna be coming on Wednesday. So we'll go to that. And then we're gonna do a recap of this uh, pretty epic week when it comes to my collecting. All right, so I did get my final package in from Best Buy, and it is now time to do our final recap for everything that we picked up on this pretty epic episode. So for starters, let's go over the last new game that I got, and that, of course, was Need for Speed Payback on the Xbox One. Now, I have this game digitally. I think I got it for like five bucks a few years ago on the digital front, but they had a physical copy for five bucks. So what I decided to do is I, I grabbed it and I'm gonna keep this sealed since I don't need it at the moment since I have a digital copy. So this is gonna be added to the sealed collection, but five bucks for a Need for Speed game, can't go wrong there. But now that we're at the final recap, let's go over our final numbers. So this game I paid five bucks for. It's actually worth 10 in new condition. So pretty solid there. Now we're gonna go to the other Best Buy pickups. And uh, I think I did pretty well on these. So the first up we have Crash Nitro Kart, Nitro Fueled on the Xbox One. I accidentally picked up two copies of this. I returned the second one, which in hindsight was kind of a mistake, but you'll see why in the next episode. But I did keep one. I had this game for a while on PS4. I traded it in because for some reason it has crazy high trade in value and I would rather play it on Xbox anyway. So I got it on Xbox. I paid like $11 for this. It's worth 20, so did very well on that one. Next up are my Limited Run games. So I picked up three Switch games that were released by Limited Run. All of these have digital versions on the Switch, but now I have physical versions of them because of course I do. And I had to grab these for obvious reasons. You'll see why soon. So first up, we have Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, the complete edition on the Switch. I already have the original version of Scott Pilgrim on the Xbox 360. Plus I have the complete edition on the Xbox One. I wanted a physical copy, mostly because this is one of those infamous cases where it was delisted and we did not know we would ever be able to play this game again. Thankfully, Ubisoft re-released it, but everybody wanted a physical copy after this happened and Limited Run came through and released one, so I got the physical copy just because I wanted it, and I figured it's probably a good game to play on the go as well. I paid 35 for this, and it is worth 28. I lost a little bit in value. That's okay. It's not the end of the world. Next, we have no more heroes on the Switch. So, the original and the sequel, No More Heroes 2, were released as digital versions on the Switch in preparation for No More Heroes 3, which did get a physical release on the Switch. But they were not released physically until Limited Run took care of it. So I picked up this one, of course, as a port of the Wii game. I paid 35 for this one, and it is worth 
46. So this one actually is some pretty good value. And I kind of already hinted that I have this too, but No More Heroes 2 on the Switch. Same deal. I wanted to have a complete set on the Switch, so I got it. 35 for this one, and No More Heroes 2 is actually worth 40. So it's a little bit less than the first one, but that's okay. And now we get to the focus of this week's episode, which happens to be this bad boy. That's right, I have finally acquired the PlayStation 5. I shared my opinions on it. I might do a video later on comparing, directly comparing the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X now that I have experience with both of them, but I finally got it. This is the working controller because I did have to go back and return my original controller because it had really bad drift. This one does not. Very happy to be able to get a PlayStation 5 for under $500 at GameStop. Now it was a pre-owned console. It looks basically brand new and it functions perfectly. So I have no qualms with that. Plus I've seen at pawn shops, they're selling PS5s for like $1,000 or $600 all over MSRP. So to get one under MSRP from GameStop with a warranty, pretty darn happy with that. So I paid out of pocket $358 for my PS5. Plus I had a good chunk of trading credit in addition to that. And the PS5 currently in loose condition is worth $563. So yeah, definitely did pretty well. And I'm glad to finally have a PS5 and to finally have completed my current gen console lineup. It's always something I try to do every console generation. I like to have a, the complete lineup so that way I don't have to worry about missing out on any big games that have come out. So now I don't have to worry about that anymore. But of course, what would a new console be without games? And I did have one PS5 game that I have been playing, but I decided to get a couple more because of course I did. So first up we have Spider-Man Miles Morales, the ultimate edition on the PS5. Notice I switched the cover art to be the alternate art as it looks better. This is the complete copy that includes not only Miles Morales, but also included a digital download of Spider-Man Remastered. So the original Marvel Spider-Man, but with improved visuals and PS5 performance upgrades. Paid a grand total of $15 plus some trading credit. And this one is actually worth 38. So pretty good. Definitely take that. And then last but certainly not least, a game that I wanted to grab. I originally thought I might have to wait until it launches on Xbox next year, but now I don't because I needed more PS5 games and I was able to get this one for pretty reasonable. Ghostwire Tokyo, the deluxe edition on the PS5. Now I know I mentioned when I got this that the deluxe edition codes do not work, but it is still in the deluxe edition box and has everything in it. So I consider it complete. I paid. $31 for this, and it's actually worth 40 bucks. So, cannot complain. And yeah, what a week. Got a new console, got a bunch of games, including some limited run games, and just can't complain. This was one of the better weeks I've had in a long time. Even though I didn't find a ton of scores, I found a ton of scores over the past few weeks. But you know, it, the ability to find a PS5 out in the wild for under MSRP and score it is huge. So I'm very, very happy to add that to the collection. It's, it's just a good day. And I'm gonna to continue to play more games on the PS5 and explore and see uh, what kind of stuff I can do. So, good stuff. Anyway, that is gonna do it for this episode of The Bargain Game Hunter. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it. If you're new around here, be sure to hit that subscribe button and click the notification bell that way you know when new videos drop. Now I know a while ago, I mentioned I was planning on doing a whole series when it comes to flipping stuff to get a PS5. And obviously since I have the PS5 now, that's not gonna be a thing. However, I'm still probably gonna do that series just with a different twist. And I'm working on reworking the twist, to see what it's gonna be. So don't worry, you're still probably gonna get your $20 Game Hunt Challenge series. It's just not gonna be for a PS5 console anymore. So I'll figure that out as we go along. Anyway, that's going to do it. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next episode of The Bargain Game Hunter. Bye-bye.